Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we ask you right now, Lord, Father, that you will pour in to us all that we need, Father, through your word. I take authority over the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. I bind Satan, all works of darkness, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I ask that I decrease and you increase, Father. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you will just pour out, Father, everything we need right now for life and godliness as we hear this message today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. I want you to know that um, we live in the times now where if you do not have an understanding of what it means to embrace the cross of Jesus Christ, you will want to give up because it will seem so hard. The word, the message actually, the title of today's message is Embrace the Foolishness of the Cross. And why it's an important message is because there are many Jesuses that are being promoted for us to follow. But the Jesus of the Bible, he gave his life for us. And the call on this earth that we are called to walk on our way to eternity with him will seem foolish to those who do not understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you swallow the ice cream and cake gospel, you will not accept the true Jesus and you will not accept embracing the foolishness of the cross. And I quote scripture. I'm not calling. I didn't make that word up. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I have some more scripture to read, but I just want to pause here. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. Those who... We don't know anything about Jesus' as Lord and God and the true and living God. They will not understand why you refuse to deny him. They will never understand why in the midst of the fiery trials of life, you refuse to back down. You refuse to say you made a mistake. No matter if you don't see around you all you know is you're going through some trials and you're saying Jesus 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 it's foolishness to them they don't know it they're perishing if you leave this earth and the true and living God is not Lord of your life he's not going to force you to spend eternity with him you make a choice by your choice now that's your choice but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You notice it says being saved. When you make that commitment and you say, Jesus, I want you as Lord and Savior of my life. At that point in time, in your spirit man, he has come in. And you that's the new creation. That's the new creation. Your spirit man, the spirit of God has come in. And that is no longer empty. The Spirit of God has come in and it's a new crea creation. It's regenerated. But I want you to understand something. It doesn't stop there. That's why it says being saved. Know the power of God. We will know those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God because there's a narrow road. And if we come off that road by choice we've chosen to turn our backs like a dog going back to its vomit the word says there are those it's better they didn't know salvation they didn't know the true and living God and they turn away so I want you to understand here that's why 
we've got to come together. That's why we've got to, when we can, come to prayer meeting or, or come to tarry, you know, be fed because what's out there drags us away all the time. The trials of life make us want to give up because we're being saved. You're saved, but you could choose to turn away. So we know the foolishness of the cross is the power of God. And you're going to understand a little bit more as I go on why it's like foolishness, but it's power. You see, in 2 Corinthians 6, and I'm going to read you a little bit, and then I'm going to go through. And I'm, and I'm telling you, I'm going to, and I'm going to get through half of this passage, because intentionally I knew the other half. We would be ministered to next week. I don't like to rush things. Is that okay? So in 2 Corinthians 6, that entire chapter, I'm going to read it to you. We then, as workers, you know something? Let's stand for the reading of the word. Let's stand for the reading of the word. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the arm of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unequally yoked. With, uh, together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell within them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. This is God's word and I want you to sit in his presence because I'm going to look at verses 1 to 10 today. We're not going to get to verse 11. And I want to give you an overview. You see, the Corinthians were like how we are now. Life was, you know, they were, well, before things started to take a little bit of a dive in this nation, there's still a lot of, you know, um, prosperity, you know. And, but with that came the entertainment, the nakedness on the streets, the, 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 the lewdness. In other words, God wanted his people to know. 
And you know a little bit more about that from verse 11 next week. Because I'm going to let you know how important it is for you to even understand when Paul tells them you are restricted by your own affections. You're going to learn some of the things that are keeping us back that we don't even know. But we're not going there today. I need us to understand something here. From verse 1 we see, We then as workers together with him, plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Even though this passage, ministers of the gospel can take it and apply it because of all the trials they go through. We are all the royal priesthood of Jesus Christ. We are all ministers of the gospel. We are all workers together, as Paul says. And these are things that we are facing and we're going to face. We've got to stand. Now every message on Sunday, it's 4 o'clock is a different message. So when it gets uploaded, you need to listen to both. Because later, I'm not going there. Let's deal with this. There are life experiences that we are going to go through. That if we don't say, the word says, his grace is sufficient. You are going to want to give up. In the midst of the trial, and I can testify to this, there are some days when I just say, his grace is sufficient. Because you see, the word says in 2 Corinthians 12, 8 to 9, and Paul said, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Listen to me, saints. When we begin to go through some of the challenges that the disciples went through and the workers of God in the churches and the ministers of the gospel went through, you will understand the foolishness of the cross is that following the Jesus of the Bible does not mean that life is going to be perfect, but you need to understand there is a power that comes forth when you recognize in your weakness his strength is made perfect because when you are weak, you are strong because guess what? The only one that could take you through the trial is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he went through what none of us could go through and Paul is saying he pleaded three times, God, take this thing away from me. Scholars suspect it was an infirmity. They can't prove it. And this is where he went on. He said, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Sometimes there's an infirmity. It hasn't gone. The pain hasn't gone. The thing you've asked God to take away hasn't gone. And what you're called to do is understand as you join with the fellowship of believers who stand on this word, they have some days, depending on what's going on with you, say, God, I praise you. And in spite of the infirmity, God, I'm going to boast your power comes down because God I'm not going to make it otherwise only you can take me through Paul pleaded and God did not remove it he said my grace is sufficient so anytime you feel that because there were big time apostles and disciples that everything went good for them not at all and there are days when you will know whatever you're praying for has not come to pass now we're not telling you if there's sin in your life and you know some sin have to go because that's what caused in the problem that's a different thing and we teach you and we equip you how to truly repent but there are times when nothing that you ask for is going to move that pain out then you glory in spite of it we are tempted to go on the phone and it's okay you know you call your friend and okay okay but here's what the friend can help you neither that's when you praise him in the midst of the storm I want you to understand that Paul quoted the prophet Isaiah when he said, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. If you notice in verse 2. Well, actually, yes, it's, it's, it's verse 2. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I want you to know that, first of all, now is the time of salvation. If you have not accepted the Lord as Lord and Savior, saints, there are people dying younger and younger. 
I don't know if it's your, you're hearing a lot of what we are hearing. Where people used to live longer and longer, they're not living as long. And we are noticing a trend. Sometimes the Lord, one of the servants of the Lord shared with us the burden to go to someone who he knew was not serving the Lord. And he obeyed. And for an entire year, the burden was there and he would keep going. The person, no, 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 always listen. For an entire year, the Lord said, go. And sometimes you're going, but you're like, God, you know, really? But you're not listening. Listen to me. God has sent his servants to preach even when he tell them in advance they're not going to listen to you. Still go. And he went and for an entire year spoke to this person and just got the message day before. Died of a massive heart attack. Early 40s. Since there's no guarantee, we don't know the next moment from the next moment. You understand? Now is the day of salvation. Unless you are 100% sure, and then I'll tell you it's zero. Because I'm telling you, I know that, I know that, I know that, I know my Redeemer lives. I know. The true and living God lives. Now is the day of salvation. But once a person has accepted the gospel, the day of salvation has dawned. There's the same urgency in the air because you've got to make it. You've got to stay on that narrow road. You've got to make it. All the things that are going to come against you to discourage you. The writer of Hebrews says, encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Encourage one another daily. Sin makes life hard for us and hardens us. All the stuff that's going on around there that, has, that the, the message later is going to explain what it's doing in this nation to make life harder for us inside of here. And even the deceitfulness of sin, when we call in something that is wrong, right, and we are deceived, and it brings a curse in our life, uh, at the end of the day, you've got to encourage each other. You've got to know today you've got to encourage because you could cause you to be so discouraged. Discouragement is the road just before hopelessness because discouragement marries itself to depression and then it becomes hopelessness so you give up so you stop serving Jesus because things too hard listen to me Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever so whether today hard or tomorrow hard he lives and you've got to make it so that you spend that place that oh no eye has heard of, no ear, that he's prepared for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And what's happening today is there's no guarantee we live until we're 60 or 70. It would be great if we did. I, I decree and declare, Lord, that all would live until a long time. But God is sovereign and he has the final say. I want you to understand as well that... Paul lets the Corinthians know that he is such a man that God is enabled to hold up under pressure. Because when you read what the word says here, in, in, in tribulations, you see these are the things that commend us, not in a prideful way. This is what you know God has deposited in you. Not when things are going good, but in pay, much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments. And I'm going to go through a lot of this in a moment. Sleeplessness. Paul is telling the Corinthians that God has held him up under pressure. And enlisting his qualities, he's trying to encourage them. If God held me up under this pressure, God is going to hold you up. You see, we can't share the gospel to people based on when our lives are going great. You could talk about Jesus. Yeah, sure. You could say you love him. But let some crisis come now. Let something happen in this nation. 
What has been deposited in you is what is going to come out. That's why now is the time to keep on keeping on, keep on in his presence. That's why the Lord said, do an 11 o'clock service. Wasn't because the 4 o'clock was back out. They still had room upstairs. And some, some weeks they will still have more space. Because God knows he wants to feed more people. Make it available. Whether two reach, one reach, just make it available. Saints, we must avail ourselves because there are seasons coming. And some of us are already going through some of those seasons where the pressures of life are going to come. And all that could come out of your mouth, whether you feel it or not, is Jesus. You are my God. You are my Lord. Jesus, I'm not backing down. I feel to give up, but I know you didn't give up. So you not giving up, carry me. Because I can't trust I can't even trust me not giving up. But Lord, you don't give up. So you carry me with your not giving up. Paul expresses. And I, and I, and I want you to understand here. He, when he talks about, when he talks about the stripes, the imprisonments, the labors, the sleeplessness, all the fasting. This was their life. Now you'll say, well, why should I receive Jesus as Lord and Savior if that's the kind of life? Well, let me tell you something. First, in this world, everybody will have trouble. But if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, he makes a way for you to face that trouble and you're coming out in the midst of the fire. You're going to come out. You know why you can't in your own self? You can't come out only through him. And not only that, you live to die. But death for the Christian, the spirit of God in us, our spirit leaves our body to go with him. Death has no, no hold on us. We, we don't disappear somewhere into some dark hole to, to, to stay held in darkness. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. God has created a place where there will be a new, eventually, a new heaven and a new earth. And our bodies will be, as Jesus, they were able to put their finger in his hands. He was able to eat fish. That's the real life. This is a passing through. Paul asserts, while he asserts all these things, all these trials, he says, do not let it, do not be a stumbling block. Do not be a stumbling block. We give no offense in anything that our ministry be not blamed. While you are going through the hard times that you are not going to be left on your own. That's why you are, you are to be part of a church community. You cannot do this on your own. The Lord says, do not give offense in anything. In other words, whether it be pastors, leaders, servants of God, the royal priesthood, remember, it's not only about you. So when you say, I want to do what I want to do, you need to understand, you are giving offense and being a stumbling block, and you are bringing shame to the name of Jesus Christ and his ministry. You are not your own. A lot of times, when we are wrestling with living right, one of the things we need to understand is, okay, we have the trials, and that in itself is challenging. But then you say, no, yeah, but I don't want, I don't want to live this way. I want to live that way. You will get to a place where you will understand. If you give offense and be a stumbling block to someone, and bring shame to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Listen. The fruit, the, the penalty for the sin that you're committing is one thing. But there's a penalty for committing a sin that is a stumbling block to somebody else. So I'll tell you right now. I can't elaborate because it's really um, linked with the message later. You see the Christians that want to talk Jesus. And when things get rough, they want to live how they want, confusing people. Because some people come to the Lord through the season that you give your life to the Lord. And then you decide you're not living for the Lord again. And they are left confused. Saints, 
Let me don't go there right now because I will end up preaching the next message. You know, as I tell you, it's different messages. So, so things are popping up because it's a message for the church of Jesus Christ. We are focusing on this one and I need us to understand our ministry must never be discredited. So you're going to find when I come to the point and I say to you, the second half of the message, that don't let your affections... As Paul said here, he says here, you are restricted by your own affections. And I'm saying, don't let your affections block you and block you, block you in, okay? It's because sometimes even the offense that we might be in, we don't do whatever it takes to make things right. We will be used by Satan to discredit Christ's ministry. In other words, for next time I'm talking to you and I'm listing some of those affections that have you kind of separated from God and you don't know what they are because I haven't listed them. But one of them is offense and unforgiveness. Some people say, why should I forgive? Because, among other things, why? Because if you don't, you discredit Christ's ministry. They have a, a list of reasons I could give you and I'll give you next week. But, You'll discredit Christ. It don't have nothing to do with whether you feel or you feel or you understand. You do whatever it takes. I want you to know that Paul, the censure that he dreads doesn't come from humans but from God. Because at the end of the day, when he starts to talk about by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true. He's giving a, district, a description of, of the, the call of the Christian. Because as the word continues, it comes back to not discrediting God's ministry and not being apart from God. Remember, we're doing one half here. But I need to mention this. Paul cared where he, he, didn't, he did not dread the, the rebuke that he would get from humans. What he dreaded the most was the rebuke that he would get from God. And to be discredited before humans is one thing. To be discredited before God is quite another. When you're thinking of how to deal with your situation. Now saints, as you know, in the short period of time that this message is being preached... All the trials you're going through, I'm not going to be able to touch on, but I will tell you in a church community, when you're feeling that you can't cope, you know, you can make an appointment, you can call, you can say, I need help. Because that trial must not take you off course. Okay? And a lot of things we can't face on our own. But then we get to the place where we may do something that is wrong. The moment we know it's hurt another person, it doesn't matter whether you meant or you didn't mean. It's hurt another person, you deal with it. And you do what it takes to make things right. And sometimes the other person may or may not be open to what you have to say. But you've got to go to God. Because at the end of the day, you are going to be discredited by humans. But once you do anything to discredit God's ministry... And I'm saying ministry could be family. You and your family living as a Christian and then they start to do things that discredit God's ministry in the family. Who you think not following God? Not the one that's looking at you, for an example. They will turn away. What about the workplace? What about church? Within church, we don't live as we are called to live all the time. And we can cause people to turn away. Though I will tell all of you, Please, the blood of Jesus is too precious. Don't let no saint make you turn away. Because a lot of times we come into church community and we're looking for perfection. You're not going to find it. The only one perfect is God. And he has decided to put imperfect people together. It's not an excuse. The moment you find out, starting from the pastors go down, you have done something that has upset someone. You do what it takes to make it right, whether you think it's reasonable or it's not reasonable. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm here to say to you that just as an aside, so you know one time, you're not going to please everybody. 
So I want you to take this in your family, in your workplace. I'm going to take it in ministry, okay? Paul says, Fault will always be found with the workers of God, the servants of God, the ministers of God. Trying to avoid this is not going to work. If you got to tiptoe around, people, remember, this passage is a long passage and we're not doing the whole thing. I'm dealing with the first part. Dealing with trials. And some trials could be anything. There are trials of, I've lost my job. There are trials of, the, the, I, 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 my job is not allowing me time with my family. There are trials where there are problems going on in my family. There are trials where you might be accused. There are all kinds of trials. But at the end of the day, it's not going to change by you striving in your own self to try to make your life better. So let's take criticism. You can't avoid it. But what you need to understand, you must know if you are serving the true and living God and you are living as he's called you to live. Not with an arrogant way. Understanding that you answer to God for the people that are in your family, that are in your workplace. If God has placed you in a family and that family is not fully saved, God is using you in there. And your life depends on you walking right so they could be saved. This is what I'm trying to say. So I want you to know that if you try to live to please man and not God, your ministry will be worthless to God. Your ministry in your family will be worthless. Your ministry in your workplace, ministry in church will be worthless because you cannot live to please man. You please God and so man gets saved. You please God, man gets ministered to. It could mean persecution for you. As you see with all the trials that Paul went through. So as I begin to close, because you see how short this message will be for the 11 o'clock service. But that's okay. We will, we will get there. Okay? I've seen some eyes pop it open because they are accustomed to the 4 o'clock service. But you know why we love? We must love each other. Everyone is different. You cannot make it all the same for everyone. Paul says, be all things to all men. Okay, and that means sometimes we need to have things a little different. So I want you to know though, that when you read this other part of this verse, these verses, where it talks about um, by honor and dishonor, evil report and good report as deceivers and yet true, as known and yet well known. Let me just say, that Paul's service for God brings much, much hardship. Your service to God is going to bring hardship just because the devil doesn't want you to serve the Lord. And there's no easy assignment where as a Christian, there's no easy assignment. However, I will tell you this. You could feel you are unknown as the word says. The devil knows who you are if you serve in Jesus. You, listen, you see this thing about we have to be known, everybody must know about. Now, I could talk as a pastor. I don't have that mindset. I may be wrong or don't care if a million people don't know about life in life. I just want to answer the call to those who are supposed to know. So sometimes we feel that every ministry is called to be all out there all the time. Not necessarily. Do you understand? But I'll tell you something. You could be unknown and known. This is what the word says. Because you're unknown to the humans, but the devil knows who you are. And because of that, where God places you, the light will shatter the darkness. They could watch you and say you're dying. You say, no, I live in. I live in. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because to live is Christ and to die is gain. You could be chastened, rebuked, put down, whatever. And we get into a lot more of that next week. But guess what? You ain't dying. You're nobody killing you unless God says, okay, it's time. Come to me, baby. Come to me. Come to me, child. Come. Come. Nobody could take you any closer to going to be with him until God is ready. Do you understand? Now, there's premature death for those who like babies being aborted, okay? You want to go and live a risky life, okay? 
There are some things could happen that God did not want to happen. But I'm talking about you are serving God and you are really asking him to help you to stay on the straight and narrow. You could be sorrowful, but you're rejoicing. You could be poor, nobody will know. The clothes you have on, press and wash every day. With the crease if it's a pants that you're wearing, you understand what I'm saying? Nobody will know. As having nothing yet possessing all things because you possess Jesus Christ, who is Lord and who is God. Saints, I want to say to you and I want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you today as we begin to close. I want to encourage you. Hard times may be here. Hard times will come. You will go through the fire and come true. God will make a way for you. When I continue this message on the kind, like I, I said to my husband, I said, would you believe this? Let me share this quick, quick, quick. Let me share this with you. I, I said, I said, look at what happened. Look at what happened to, to, to Paul. He talks here. He talks here about, I want to find, I want to find the line to share it with you. As we begin to close, just bear with me because it's worth understanding that Paul, yes, 1 Corinthians 4.11, to the present hour, we both hunger and thirst and we are poorly clothed, beaten and homeless. Now, saints, I don't want nobody to feel when you give your life to the Lord, you're going to be homeless. But I want you to understand, Paul was homeless at some point in time. Paul was beaten and poorly clothed at some point in time. The power of God didn't come because Paul had a house and Paul had clothes and Paul had this and that. The power of God came because when Paul was beaten down, the power of God rose up. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's something that's going to take you a little while to grasp. We're not trying to tell you as a Christian, well, everything going to go wrong. But I will tell you something. Anything the devil wants to bring to go wrong, God is going to turn it over are wronged. Do you understand what I'm saying? God is going to turn it around. So for example, as I, I'm definitely going to close now, but the message, don't miss it next week because I haven't even gotten into the full half. Let me tell you something. When we were coming in here this morning, first of all, last night we knew the enemy was angry about this service. My husband and I felt it. And as we sat down to pray, a message came from someone who's not in this church saying, we're praying for you right now. So I knew we were discerning. Now, we walked in here. What are we going to see on the ground? Now, this ministry knows the kind of divination that people send. Okay? A set of bones. I say, okay. Again, rid of it. I'm praying, I'm pulling it down, whatever, whatever. The people coming inside here, not one will be touched. The mistake I made... I dealt with that entrance I didn't deal with this entrance so my husband who came afterwards came in as he always does the lights were off because it was just a few of us and we didn't have time to go down tripped and fell and damaged I understand it's a shoulder but we didn't know at the time but here the mercy of God now I want all you to understand something adversity what do you do Someone coming from Sangre Grande, who car wasn't starting, 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 finally start, reached down a member just in time. Saints, he wasn't in the open, you know. He was in a section downstairs in darkness where no one would have seen him. But that person turned up just when it happened. Couldn't come off the ground, couldn't move. Well, the intercessors from upstairs, we started to pray down the place so that he could have gotten up. Why am I telling you this? Because, first of all, it's adversity. The Lord says, I'm to stay. He's to go. His people need to be fed. I don't know fully what the diagnosis is, but I'm here to tell you, my Redeemer lives. And his Redeemer lives. You understand? God's people that were to be blocked from coming or receiving are here. Hardships will come. You're not in this by yourself. 
I wasn't in it by myself. They had intercessors up here. They ran down the stairs. I see people reaching record time in the car. Because if we had called the ambulance, we might, maybe, who knows, no. Maybe it did, might have come. But the thing is, and just as we taught how we lift him up in Jesus' name, you have to get up in Jesus' name. He started to get up. Because we can't lift him. Listen to me. Go home to your families today. Share the love of God with them. Understand it's not always going to be lovey-dovey, nicey-nicey. Do not be a stumbling block. Do not be a source of offense to make them miss what you are getting and what you have. And some are more ahead than others, but you're going to get there. Because one day, in the twinkling of an eye, we know not. Now listen, let me tell you, God forbid this didn't happen. But the devil wanted my husband to fall and crack his skull right here on the ground. Okay? It could happen. The person who got a heart attack at 48. We are hearing of all kinds of situations. Listen to me. You live as if this is the last moment of the rest of your life. You love as if you have never been hurt before. You hear what I'm telling you? In the midst of the trials... The devil will know. No weapon formed against this one shall prosper. I might send it, but it's not going to prosper. Because in Jesus' mighty name, God is going to take you through. And this is the foolishness of the cross. That is the power of God. Amen? Amen. So as we close, I'd like to ask if there's anyone who wants to accept Jesus to say, I don't know this Jesus. I only hear him. I want him to come into my life. We will commit to help you to walk with you. I'm going to throw that out again every week. I'm going to say it because I know that I know that I know my Redeemer lives. If there's anyone who wants to say, Jesus, come into my life. I will pause for a minute. Father, touch the hearts of your people, O oh God. Touch the hearts of your people, O oh God, and those who will be your children, O oh God, because you, you, you have no favorites, but God, you send out that call for hearts to turn to you. Father, right now, touch the hearts of those that need to give you authority over their life, O oh God, right now. In Jesus' mighty name, is there anyone here? Before I continue. I want to tell you, the Lord is tugging at a couple of people here. But I'm, I don't force. You belong to the Lord. Don't let pride, don't let fear, don't let those things keep you back. But I will be staying back to pray with people later if they wish. So I'm going to ask our minister in training, Larry, just to close, close us off in prayer. Saints, can we stand for prayer? as we come to our close. Have we received from him? Yes. Have we been fed? Yes. We bless his name and we give him thanks and we worship him. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord yes. God, Adonai Elohim. We thank you for who you are and because of who you are, Lord God, we choose to worship you and exalt your holy name. We magnify you, Lord God. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the service. We thank you for our reverence, O oh Lord my God. Father, we bless your name with all we have, O oh Lord, my God. All that is within us, Father, we bless you. Father, we pray, Lord God, your blessings upon each soul here today, Lord God. We pray that you will prosper their soul, Lord God. We pray that what you have deposited in their hearts, Lord God, will begin to spring with the life of Christ will spring forth with the fruit yes. that you desire in each person Lord God upon each heart oh Lord my God young and old male and female Father you will touch them Lord God we know Lord God Holy Spirit move upon them Father Lord God draw them closer to you Lord God Father let your light shine upon each heart Lord God and reveal the glory of Christ upon their hearts oh Lord my God in Jesus mighty name Father we pray your yes, protection Lord. upon your people Lord God yes, as they Father. leave here yes, 
Lord. We pray that you will increase your love in each of their hearts, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will bring that understanding and that knowledge and that revelation of who you are and how much you desire to love us, Lord God, that you will never leave us yes. and that you will never forsake or leave anyone yes, here Father. today, Lord yes, God, Lord. for the rest of their lives. Father, you be their God and you be their shield. Surround them with your angels and guard them with your fire. Protect them in their going and their out, in their going in and out, Lord my God, and their households. Yes, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we bless you. Yes, and Father. we worship you in we Jesus' mighty you. name. In Jesus' Amen. name, Amen.